Good evening. This is Ronald Coleman. And Benita Coleman. Inviting you to join us again on the campus of Ivy College as the guest of our sponsors, the Brewers of Schlitz Beer. Tonight's program is dedicated to Dr. E. Wilson Lyon, president of Pomona College, Claremont, California. The taste of Schlitz. The taste so many people prefer has made Schlitz beer first in sales in the USA. If you like good beer, do as millions of people are doing all over the nation. Ask for Schlitz, the most popular beer in history. again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. One of the most important qualifications of an executive is the ability to make decisions. This is not always easy, as Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy, has just been reminded. So it was with a good deal of thought and consideration that he finally picked out a new hat at Ivy's leading haberdashery. And now, mission accomplished, he meets his wife, Victoria, in front of the Ivy department store. Well, Vicky. Hello, <clears throat> darling. I found the dreamiest spring dress today. It's oh. all wonderful flouncy sleeves and fle- fresh as an apple blossom, pale green shantung with... Oh, I can't wait till you see it. Well, neither can I, never having seen the shantung apple blossom. <laughs> but um, it sounds like something out of Hattie Carnegie by Luther Burbank. No, <laughs> But what did you do while I was shopping, darling? Well, in a spirit of bravado, uh, this being a working day for college presidents, I toyed with the idea of seeing a movie. And did you? No, dear. It was a horse opera for which, as a rule, I have a great affection. But uh, from the posters outside, well, I would judge that this one was written on horseback, cast with studio creditors and shot from the hip. (laughs) (laughs) So what did you do? Uh, Haven't you noticed? Haircut? Uh, No. Dentist? No. Library? No. I give up. I bought a new hat. Oh, how wonderful. I'll be delivering it today. Uh, Vicky, I am wearing it. (laughs) Oh, oh, how unobservant of me. Now, it's simply magnificent. But you always look so handsome in your hat. You never wear a new hat as though it was a new hat, if uh, you know what I mean. Uh, you mean I, I always wear the same kind of hat, so how could you possibly know this was a new one? Well, not everybody can wear a Homburg without looking like a Swiss waiter out of work. <laughs> well, thank you, darling, but it's not a Homburg. It's a fedora. Well, you look fedorable in it. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm glad now I didn't buy a bowler. Hmm? It might have knocked you off your pin. <laughs> Try and cap that, my love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did I tell you while you were out this morning the Phi Beta Kappa Society call? Oh? They want you to address their meeting next Thursday. Thursday? Good. It's always a pleasure to meet with our more exemplary students. Mm. Toddy, since Phi Beta Kappa is, uh, isn't a social fraternity, why the Greek letters? Why don't they just call themselves the cream of the crop or the straight A kids or something? Well, because of the because of its classic origin, my dear. What classic origin? Well, uh, it, it, uh, it, it's quite interesting. Um, in a way, uh, very few people know about it. Really? It started at the Ladies' Seminary in Massachusetts in the 1860s. Uh, the, the, the Abigail True Blood Academy for Young Ladies, I think it was. Go on. Uh, well, it seems there was a high-spirited girl of good family named Elizabeth Capper. Elizabeth Capper, huh? Mm, it's a revolutionary spirit, an iconoclast, a rebel. Uh, you know, the fudge at midnight, Boccaccio's to Cameron behind the grammar book, n- nose powdered surreptitiously with a stolen marshmallow. Well, well, it seems that her conduct was such that her fellow students would lay aside their embroidery hoops, inhale deeply of their aromatic spirits of ammonia, raise their unplucked eyebrows, and say, Hi, Betty Kappa. <laughs> Her, her scholastic brilliance more than balanced her unorthodox conduct. So uh, thereafter, the most uh, outstanding students became known as uh, Phi Beta Kappas. <laughs> uh, Toddy, 
Uh, yes, my love? Who do you think writes the best fiction, Ernest Hemingway or William T. Hall? <laughs> I didn't think I was no, getting no, away. I no, I think you might not. <laughs> oh, one second. Here comes that nice French girl. Well, what's her name? Mary Louise, something Oh, like. yes, our little mademoiselle from the Sorbonne. Yes. I'm afraid we've rather neglected our prettiest exchange student. Ah, Mademoiselle Genet, je suis enchantée de vous revoir. Hello, Dr. Hall. Mrs. Hall? Hello, Eloise. Comment allez-vous? Oh, very much okay, Mrs. Hall. I'm having what you call a ball. <laughs> you, you seem to be completely at ease with our campus colloquialisms. Well, I'm trying to think in not French, but this is sometimes a difficulty. I thought before I left Paris that I knew English, but American is not English. <laughs> as Mr. Dooley said, when the American people get through with the English language, it will look as if it had been run over by a musical comedy. Eloise, <laughs> <laughs> I've been meaning to call you. Dr. Hall and I would like you to come to dinner soon. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hall. I should like to. Everybody has been so generous since I'm here. But then the hospitality of you Americans is even greater than you Americans say it is. Almost too much. With so much of social living, when is the education? Oh, I don't mean to protest, but I am curious. Well, naturally. But don't discount social living, as you call it, as a part of education. Education is understanding people as well as books. But I am amazed. Everything is much fun and no attention to the class. And then examinations arrive and everybody goes off his head with the... Mm, coming. Yes, uh, Eloise, the word is cramming. Uh, scramming is what they do the minute the examination is over. <laughs> exactly, Mrs. Hall. Tout de suite, everybody gets educated. And after the examination, tout de suite, everybody goes back to having relaxation again. And a very interesting and, I must say, fairly accurate description of college life, Miss Jenny. But uh, since your impressions are so astute, why don't you put them on paper? I'm sure the Ivy Bowl would be delighted to print it, and everybody here should be interested to know how Ivy looks through the lovely eyes of a visitor from Paris. That is very kind, Dr. Hall, but I am nobody. Well, you write the article, Eloise, and you'll be somebody. <laughs> and it'll give you good practice in thinking in not French. <laughs> well, if you'd like me to do this, I shall be most happy to try. That's splendid. If, as Oliver Wendell Holmes said, good Americans, when they die, go to Paris, let's hear what Paris says on coming here to live. <laughs> Yes, who, Toddy? Well, the only one who makes our do doorbell sound like a four-alarm fire is Mr. Wellman. <laughs> Ring it hard is his rule of thumb. He has an unfair advantage over us. He has two thumbs and we only have one doorbell. <laughs> oh, it's you, Mr. Wellman. Of course it is. And I believe as much in international goodwill as the next man. Good neighbor policy. Hands across the street. Good morning, Dr. Hall. Well, come in. Come in, but Mr. But when somebody takes advantage or puts it down in black and white, I good mean... Good morning, Mr. Wellman. After all our hospitality, after we've taken every means, so good morning, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> I'll come right to the point. Of what? Of what I'm talking about. Oh. You may condone it, Dr. Hall, because you're always leaning backwards. Diplomacy, soft words, cagey tactics. Turn the other cheek. But there comes a time when you run out of cheeks. Only true to a customer. <laughs> and you can't let fly in the teeth. You have to face it. Face it, Dr. Hall. Well, I, I'm willing, but it would help me if I knew what I had to face. I just told you. Oh. It's a simple question of international etiquette, manners. When a girl can insult those who... Well, all I can say is, if she doesn't like it where she come from, why doesn't she come back here? <laughs> Uh, Dr. Hall, uh, uh, did you read the article of the Ivy Bowl this morning? Uh, what article? Uh, by that French girl. He's done nothing but criticize us, and criticism is fine in its place. So that, that is, when, when we criticize ourselves. But when we invite a guest into our house and she tries to tear it down and destroy what we have built up, well, what are you going to do about this Miss Jeanette? Well, Jeanette, don't you mean Jeanette, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wilmer? I do not. I said Jeanette, and I mean Jeanette. Oh, 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 oh that's right, French. Don't pronounce the T unless it's feminine has a T. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you don't have to tell me, Mrs. Hall. I know about French. Been to Paris. Liked it, too. champs Elysees, Place de la Concorde, Optique Triomphe. Holy Berger. Oh, boy, I remember one particular. <laughs> 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 What, what was I... Uh, well, now, what else did you take in, Mr. Wellman? The Eiffel Tower? Uh, no, 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 no. Can't stand heights, Mrs. Hall. But, but I didn't insult them. If those Frenchmen like towers... Who am I? <laughs> live and let live. 
I was their guest. No, no, bless her, please. Uh, well, Mr. Wellman, before you go any further, in all fairness to Miss Jenny, I, I, I must share responsibility for this article. After all, I suggested that she write it. You? Well, Miss Jenny is a perceptive young lady, and I felt that her impressions of Ivy would be interesting to all of us. Uh, interesting. Thinks our regulations are dictatorial. Always heard that women had more freedom in America. But, but we treat them like children, she said. She doesn't like anything. Thinks our curfew is an indignity. The honor system is hypocritical that we, I, you, well, well I won't go on. It's subversive, Dr. Hall. Shocking. Oh, no, I don't know. I think honest criticism is healthy and constructive. Well, Mr. Wellman, there is a certain school of thought which regards any and all criticism of American life as subversive. I never attended that school. As far as I am concerned, the, the birth of a doubt is the beginning of an education. If we, as a nation, born in protest and dissent, are not strong and healthy enough to withstand a few nonconformist views, then we had better close up shop and, and build a fleet of Mayflowers for a return voyage. Mm. It depends on whether you want a candid opinion or a sugar-candied one, Mr. Wellman. <laughs> well, candied or not, next she'll be telling us how to run the college. Well, Dr. Hall, all I can say is don't forget your ecclesiastics. Oh? Receive a stranger in, and he shall overthrow thee with a whirlwind, and shall turn thee out of thy own. And if it's good enough for ecclesiasticus, it's good enough for me. Good day, <laughs> Dr. Hall. <laughs> Ecclesiasticus. Hmm. I would have liked an opportunity to remind him of another passage from the good book. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Yes, darling, but if Mr. Wellman has his devilish way, this little angel is going to get her wings clipped. <laughs> Quite a few years since Miss Bessie Gordon flunked me in a high school geometry test, but I knew her in an instant when I met her downtown the other day. Well, well, Miss Bessie, well, it's certainly good to see you after all these years. Uh, you remember me, don't you? Goodness me, but of course, you're the carpenter boy. That's right, Miss Bessie, Ken Carpenter, and uh, thanks for the boy. Oh, I remember you very well indeed. Uh, second seat, third row from the left in my 1030 section. Oh, Miss Lee, such grubby papers you used to hand in. Grubby? Oh, oh please now, Miss Bessie. That was a long time ago. Uh, you're retired now, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't suppose anybody's ever told you what I'm doing now, have they? Told me? But how could I help knowing? Don't forget, I have a radio. Since I've retired, I listen to it a lot. Of course I know what you're doing. You're the man who tells people about Schlitz beer. That's right. And I must say, Kenneth, you sound very convincing. Oh. And much more accurate, I'm sure, than you were in geometry. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Bessie. You see, I am convinced about Schlitz being the best-liked beer in America. And so are millions of other people who like the taste of it so much, they've made it their regular beer. Sales prove it, you know. Schlitz is America's best-liked beer. I must say, Kenneth, Schlitz is a lovely beer, just lovely. <laughs> I often have a glass of it, uh, evenings, you know, when I'm taking my ease and such. I'm so glad you like it, Miss Bessie. And you know, in a way, Schlitz is a lot like one of your, well, one of your, it just simply never varies. It's always the same, always good. Uh, Kenneth, I wonder... Yes, Miss Bessie? I was just going to suggest that you might drop in and share a glass of Schlitz with an old lady. I always have them in my refrigerator with such nice beer. Why, Miss Bessie, nothing would give me more pleasure. You know, Kenneth, it's the first time in years you and I have had a congruent opinion. <laughs> I certainly think we should drink a toast to them. Come along. All right. Now to return to the halls of Ivy. It's the next day, and Dr. and Mrs. Hall have a visitor, Miss Eloise Genet, the young French exchange student whose article in the college paper has caused so much comment. Dr. Hall is speaking. The new world has always been a subject of curiosity to the old Eloise. 
And we have often learned much about ourselves from the observations of travelers. They've all helped Americans to see themselves more clearly. You are very gentle, Dr. Hall, but it is clear you asked me here today to spank me about my article. Oh, Eloise, Dr. Hall never does anything behind anybody's back. <laughs> Uh, well, there is nothing, there is nothing to chide you about in your article, Eloise. On the whole, you've been very fair. However, I, I should warn you that there are certain people on the campus who, uh, who might misinterpret your honest expression of opinion. But of course, I've already heard some discussion. But this is America, where everyone can speak freely. And it is a tradition which must be exercised to be kept, Miss Jenny. You see, Eloise, it's Mr. Clarence Wellman, the chairman of our board of governors, who has taken exception to some of the things you've written. Mr. Wellman? But he is only a governor. Dr. Hall is the president. <laughs> yeah, she makes it sound so simple, yes. doesn't she? <laughs> In any event, Eloise, uh, I certainly don't want you to discontinue your series. There must be many more aspects of Ivy life that have impressed you. Some good things. Oh, yes. So many magnificent things I've seen, and so many novelties. It is so dumbfounding, the energy, the spirit, and imagination about everything. Even the clothes. Yes, yes, it takes a lot of imagination to be as spectacularly casual as some of our undergraduates. <laughs> yes. I'm amazed at their enterprise. When I see the uses to which the T-shirt is put, I understand why the late Sir Thomas Lipton went to sea. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it is because American girls are so pretty. They do not have to try to look prettier than they are. But clothes, fashion, they are so exciting. And with just a little of their wonderful imagination, why, why they could look terrific. Well, Eloise, bless you. Now, your next article has simply got to be about campus clothes. You dress so well on your small allowance. Everybody wonders how you do it. You're the envy and the despair of the campus. And... I think you're the answer to a problem. Yes, 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 yes. All right, all right. Right away. Goodbye. What a ridiculous... Of all, of all oh, the... on the phone, darling. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, Mr. Wellman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's in a rage about El Eloise's new article on campus clothes. And he's coming right over, naturally. Well, good. Eloise is coming over, too. Well, it's just about time they met each other. Mm -hmm. You know, your plans have progressed far enough so, so that... Uh, why, Vicky, that dress... Well, do you like it, darling? Well, I've always liked it. No, but it's the new one I bought just the other day. You've never seen it before. Oh, no, 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 no. Vicky, no, no, no. It's the, it's the same one, the apple blossom dress. You wore it on our first drive into the English countryside together. Oh, Toddy, yes. Do you remember that? Why, that was only the second time we'd ever met. Yes, I'd introduced myself to you backstage the night before. And then the next morning, in the middle of London, in a whirlpool of people, suddenly... Oh, Violets! Violets! Lovely violets! Violets! Lovely violets! Oh, Miss Cromwell. Mr. Hall! I saw you from my car. I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, well, goodness, fancy seeing you here. I was just thinking well, of how, how are, are you? I, I did enjoy last it was night. So I, sweet to come I wondered around. if I'd I ever see you again. I... I. Hello. Oh, Miss Cromwell. Dear Miss Cromwell. Do you always go about wearing your wedding dress? Oh, for heaven's sake. This is a pale green suit. I'm not wearing a wedding dress. Aren't you? Do you mean to say it is only your face which makes you look so resplendent? <laughs> now, now, really. You must have got up awfully early to keep the brownie stone and be back so soon. Oh, listen, 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 oh, <laughs> she laughs and all the other bells in London start to ring. I never saw such a girl. You are absurd. The bells are for the wedding over there in St. George's. Oh, oh, they're, they're just getting married to flatter you. What? Just to add glitter to this extraordinary occasion, this wonderful historic day, 
this shining, glorious birthday. But whose birthday is it to cause such a commotion? Yours? No, no, no. It's the brand new birthday of a matchless idea that Miss Crumble shall drive into the country and have lunch with Mr. Hall. Will you? Well, Can you? I you, you must. There is no alternative. I passed a law. It's part of the Magna Carta. And you can't lunch all alone in your wedding dress. Oh, and, and, and you in your shining arm. Violet, well, I, Violet, I, I, lovely I, I, Violet, silly to the belly. Violet, here, I've got a bunch for you, Governor. <laughs> I've got, here. How about, um, how about 15 shillings for the lot? 15, Bob? Cool, lummy. Uh-huh. Right, how are you, Governor? Oh, Mr. Hall, now you can't. Oh, yes, okay, here, 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 here. Here you are, my friend. 15, oh, Bob. Oh, I... thank you, Governor. You're a prince. <laughs> here. Here's a tip for you. Put your shirt on happy day, the 3.30. You can't lose. <laughs> Good boy, Governor. You're a prince. Uh-huh. You see, Miss Crumble, a prince. Shining armor and all. So, so what about lunch? Well, I suppose I can't let a prince sit down all by himself, can I? So, I... Oh, look. Look, the big dame, like, coming across the square. It's the king and queen. Well, of course. Do you think for a second that the king and queen would fail to appear on this historic occasion? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty. I wave my loyal hat to you. Godspeed. Oh, Mr. Hall, you're not supposed to, really. <laughs> I, oh, look, look. Yeah. They smiled at you and nodded. Aren't they wonderful? Uh, we have the royal seal of approval. So it's ho for the open road. Here, here's my coach. Uh, looking more like a pumpkin, I must admit, but it's mine until midnight. Come on. Let's drive until we find an orchard of apple blossoms and a country fair. The sun is a shining to welcome the day with, with a hail. Oh, come to love now. The folk are all singing so merry and gay with a hail. Oh, come to love now. The folk are shining to welcome the day with a hail. Come to the fair. William, William, the we have a visitor here. Singing so merry and gay with a hey ho. Come to the fair, the fiddle. Fair? Are... What fair are you talking about, Doctor? Oh, 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 was I? Oh, Mister Wellman, how can you sing on such? What nonsense is this? It isn't nonsense, Mister Wellman. It was apple blossoms and bells and the king and queen riding by. And don't forget, Vicky, a lovely dress. A dress? Well, that's that's what I came here for. It, it's outrageous. The the sloppy dressing our suit. Uh, no, no, no. I mean that that's what that. Janae girl said. Well? Well, what? Say something. Well, I can The whole only... campus is up in arms. If this girl hasn't got a friend left, they'll throw her out. Oh, I'm afraid you're a very bad judge of campus opinion, Mr. Wellman. And if your wife can help it, nobody will throw her out. My wife? Mm-hmm. My wife? Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean Mrs. Wellman. <laughs> Why? I haven't even seen her the last couple of days. Out all the time, gadding around. But what has she got to do with all this? Well, Mr. Wellman, your wife is the head of the committee for an important Ivy project. The Spring Fashion Show. Oh, that. Nobody's interested in that. Big bust every year. Flop. (laughs) Not this year. Mrs. Wellman has come up with a tremendous surprise and everybody's delighted. It's going to be one of the biggest events of the season. But where have you been, Mr. Wellman? Where have I been? Mm. Tending to Ivy business, of course. And it's Ivy's business to put this French foreigner in her place. But, Mr. Wellman, your wife has already done that. What? Yes. Mrs. Wellman realized that in Miss Jenny we had a rare opportunity. She is Paris, in person, come to Ivy. So, your wife managed to persuade her to act as student advisor for the fashion show. Bertha did all this? Uh huh. My wife? Uh huh. <laughs> Why, she never had a. It's a brilliant idea, regardless of who thought of it, and I, but I doubt it, my wife. Well, imagine! <laughs> Bertha! I've been underestimating. Oh, I see. That must be... Uh, I, I'll get it, William. Uh, I'm afraid we've digressed somewhat, Mr. Wellman. Now, to get back to your objection to free speech in the Ivy Bowl. I never said but, anything about Mr. free... Mr. Wellman, have you met Miss Eloise Janet? Hello, Mr. Wellman. Hello, Dr. Hall. Oh, good afternoon, Eloise. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, bonjour, mademoiselle. So now I finally meet the wonderful Mr. Wellman. Wonderful? You mean that, uh, well, I, I'm... <laughs> and your wife has been si charmante. I knew that her husband must be equally charming. Uh, we were just telling Mr. Wellman how splendidly you and Mrs. Wellman are working together on the fashion show. And you were delighted, weren't you, Mr. Wellman? 
Was I? I'm so glad I found you here, Mr. Wellman. I wanted to ask you to help me with my problem. Oh, well, if you didn't really mean what you're... Naturally, uh, uh, naturally, I'll be glad... What is it? We already have two judges for our fashion show, Mr. Wellman. The dean of women and the student. But we need someone from the outside. Someone typically American. And very much a man. And so, would you be that judge for us, Mr. Wellman? Who, me? <laughs> judge? What a brilliant idea, Eloise. Uh, oh, wait, wait, Victoria. Um, uh, feeling as he does about the sartorial freedom of Ivy's students, perhaps Mr. Wellman would not want to. I most certainly do want to, Dr. Hall. <laughs> High time we did something about the disgraceful... Even if you don't, Dr. Hall, I, I, I mean, uh, new blood, new ideas, change. That's what fashion means, change. Isn't that right, uh, Miss Cheney? May we, oui, Mr. Wellman. I'm overwhelmed by your understanding. And may I tell Mrs. Wellman that you agree? Well, Bertha, well, what is she? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, of course. Uh, a man, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typical American. Très bien. I have an appointment with your wife this morning. And if you are not too busy, perhaps you could join us and we can talk the details over together. Will you excuse us, Dr. Hall? Mrs. Hall? Oh, why, of course, Eloise. And congratulations, Mr. Wellman. Oh, well, uh, uh, thank you. It's a nothing. Uh, uh, after all, mon vivant, pour des forces, esprit de corps, you know. Vive la France! Allons en fond de la patrie, le Ah, you, you mistake full credit, Madam Machiavelli. Oh, it was nothing, really. Ah, but that idea of yours of appointing Mr. Wellman as a judge was a stroke of intuitive genius. Yeah, I wish I'd thought of that, but that wasn't my idea. It was Eloise's own trump card. And we mustn't forget Bertha, Mrs. Wellman, who was probably named after Big Bertha, the giant cannon that from <laughs> World War I. Yeah, well, our Bertha has a bigger ball. Named Clarence. Yeah. <laughs> Poor man, he didn't have a chance with the odds so well stacked against him. Female of the species, you know. Oh, yes, yes, I know very well. When a man's hair turns white, it is not necessarily a token of age. It is more likely a belated sign of surrender. <laughs> Napoleon himself, a veteran campaigner, was not strategist enough for victory at home. When pensively reviewing his domestic relations with the Empress Josephine, he said, and I quote, I generally had to give in. The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, has been presented by Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. The taste of Schlitz. The taste so many people prefer has made Schlitz beer first in sales in the USA. Why don't you two enjoy the most popular beer in history? Next time, every time, ask for Schlitz beer. Now, here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Colton. Good night, everybody. Good night from all of us. And from our sponsor, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and its thousands of friendly dealers throughout the nation. Good night. Good night. We'll be seeing you next week at this same time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Cole. Mr. Wellman is played by Herbert Butterfield. Eloise was Gladys Holland, and the flower vendor was Dennis Fraser. Tonight's script was written by Barbara and Milton Merlin, Benita Coleman, and Don Quinn. Music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Milton Merlin, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who invites you to enjoy on television the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars with Helen Hayes, Margaret Sullivan, Lillian Gish, and more of the brightest names of Hollywood and Broadway. See your newspaper for Time and Channel. Ken Carpenter speaking.
preceding was transcribed. Listen tonight for The Great Gildersleeve on...